Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and finally institutional investors are starting to sell their properties, specifically single family residences. And this is not just with invitation homes, it's now finally starting to spread to other institutional investors across Wall Street. I understand not only institutional investors own properties, but there's no doubt that institutional investors have been known to purchase entire subdivisions, neighborhoods, and blocks of affordable housing, preventing potential would-be home buyers from being able to purchase something that they can afford. So we're not going to really talk about like the mom and pop investors, which is a bigger piece of the pie. We're going to stick into institutional investors. We're going to go into what's going on exactly with institutional investors. And the reality is you guys, the reason why I'm starting with the big guys as far as institutional investors is because generally they see things coming before the rest of us. In other words, what we're going to do today is we're going to follow the money because the reason why these institutional investors are running from the real estate market and quite frankly because it's unaffordable cap rates are in the garbage and not only are cap rates in the garbage we can take our money invested in treasury bills and get close not six percent depending on your investment but close to six percent with zero risks and not to mention there is a bloodbath forming right now in commercial real estate so why would these people want to waste their time in residential real estate when they can get even richer in commercial real estate and all of this at the end should hopefully help us but the question is are institutional investors selling enough properties right now to make a drastic difference in inventory and in home prices we'll dig into two articles today basically going into starwood and the fact that they're currently shopping 2,000 rental homes. Now, this is a huge institutional investor. The name of this article is Starwood Eyes Sell of More Than 2,000 Rental Homes. More than likely, they're not profitable or they want to cash in and use that money elsewhere, perhaps in commercial real estate. Starwood Capital Group, led by Barry, is exploring a sale of more than 2,000 single-family rental homes. Most of the homes being offered for sale by Starwood Real Estate Income Trust are part of a portfolio acquired from pre-team partners in late 2021, according to people familiar with the matter who asked not to be named because of an effort to be private. Pretium is reacquiring about 100 homes. People familiar with this matter said the homes are not being offered at distressed prices as it's possible that Starwood holds onto the bulk of the homes, the people said. So right now, they're obviously shopping the homes and so far they don't want to offer them at fire sale prices. So far, but again, the beautiful thing is this party is just starting. There's been so much kicking of the can and propping up it's been slightly delayed, but there is a monster forming right now. The Real Estate Investment Trust Company, Starwood Real Estate Investment Trust, owned 3,200 single-family rental homes valued at a whopping $1.2 billion as of March 31st, according to a filing. So if they own 3,200 homes and they plan on selling 2,000 homes, what does that tell us, y'all? That tells us they possibly are going to ditch half of their portfolio, over half of their portfolio. It recognized a nearly $80 million impairment charge, ouch, on various single family rental properties during the first quarter on revised cash flow assumptions. Due to an increased probability of near term disposition, the trust reported, Starwood also owns rental homes outside of the real estate investment trust. So just the real estate investment trust has the 3,200 homes. They have additional homes. The Starwood Real Estate Investment Trust with a net asset value of 12.8 billion that's insane and a concentration in housing and industry buildings has forced higher redemptions in recent months leading the firm to restrict how much money the trust returns at one time that's crazy also goes on here blackstone also did something similar they limited the amount of money that people could pull out of these real estate investment trusts so 
In my opinion, you all, that's a huge red flag. There's smoke forming. There's probably a fire if there's smoke, obviously. So in other words, tread lightly. The big guys with the real money, they're fleeing the housing market because they know not only is it unaffordable and they can't hit cap rates, the rental market is deteriorating. There's an eviction crisis, but also these homes are fixing to have additional price collapse. Again, just my opinion, but when we follow the money, they're running away. We'll finish up this video by going into one more article from Fortune Magazine that gives us a broader view of what happened. The name of this article is Institutional Firms Are Pulling Back From The U.S. Housing Market. Thank goodness because we don't want that demand. Just look at Starwood's decision to shop 2,000 single family rentals. And the single family rentals, y'all, that's what we want. Starwood Capital CEO Barry doesn't hold back on his Federal Reserve criticism. So obviously he's very bullish and he doesn't want these high interest rates. On multiple occasions, he's told CNBC anchors that the central bank's aggressive interest rate hikes could spur a deep recession. Okay, that's fair. It's easy to see why he's so openly critical of the Fed. Starwoods primarily invests in real estate, where the Fed's interest rate hikes have already caused a great deal of economic pain. And there's still realtors saying, it's never been a better time to buy. Just follow the money, y'all. Just follow the money. Last week, Bloomberg reported that Starwood Real Estate Income Trust plans to shop more than 2,000 single-family rentals. Starwood, which declined Fortune's interview request, hasn't publicly explained its motive for pulling back from the residential housing market, where its real estate investment trust owns 3,200 homes. That said, it's clear that the decision to shop these 2,000 homes comes as Starwood faces an uptick in redemption requests and endures pain in the commercial real estate sector. So understand this, there's a twofer. So they have people trying to take out their money, redeem, plus they're also taking massive losses in commercial real estate. So they're getting a double whammy. So the, th the question here is, is are these selling these houses because they're not profitable or are they selling these houses because they're forced to? Think about it. They're doing a double whammy redemption request and commercial real estate losses. I'm starting to think these institutional investors are already being forced to sell their SFR portfolio so that they have the liquidation just like we have been preparing for. Now, again, the question is, is, is it enough inventory to make a positive difference right now? And unfortunately, guys, that answer is, is probably not. However, these are great signs of things to come. Let's finish out the article. At first glance, we might assume Wall Street types would pull back from the commercial real estate space where office values are sinking fast and instead pile into the residential housing market. Interesting. Where national home values are rising again after passing through a mild home price correction last fall. However, institutional firms are also timid on the residential front. According to an analysis conducted by John Burns Research and Consulting, institutional investors, those owning a thousand homes or more, bought 90% fewer homes in January and February than they did in the first two months of 2022. So not only are we starting to see these people sell these houses, we're also starting to see demand get crushed. These are great things, y'all. Why are institutional investors pulling back so fast from the U.S. housing market? It boils down to the fact that financial return on each additional home added just isn't that profitable or great right now after factoring in interest rates, house prices, and rents. And again, add the eviction crisis to this. Not to mention some big investors like Yield Street think the national home prices, despite jumping a bit this spring, are posed for another step down. So some people are anticipating on further price decline. Again, I say, follow the money. We're pretty much on a pause across all home buying strategies. Director at Yield Street said, I don't think prices have bottomed yet. On average, we have another 5% decline nationally, and it'll vary by market from peak to trough. We're expecting 
10 to 15% decline. The money is saying there's probably going to be a decline. We're positing all buying right now. And you guys are probably familiar with this graph from Invitation Homes right now. This is the number one SFR institutional investor in America. Again, just SFRs, they own 83,000 homes and they are no longer on a buying spree. You guys can see that in this graph right here. It has plummeted ever since Q1 of 2022. They're actually now selling, as you can see here, more than they're buying and they're basically stopped buying. So it's many institutional investors, not just one. Not only are institutional investors buying fewer homes, some are reducing their overall single family portfolios. This is great for us, you guys. We need more of this. This is what we want. Look no further than Invitation Homes, the largest owner of US single family rental homes, which recently became a net seller. In the first quarter of 2023, Invitation Homes bought 194 homes while it sold off 297 homes. That's not all, you guys. A year earlier in the first quarter of 2022, Invitation Homes, which Blackstone helped to grow before divesting in 2019, bought 822 single-family homes and sold off 147. But look at this, guys. This is a graph from American Homes for Rent, which owns an astonishing 58,000 homes. And if we look here, same thing with this graph. Look all the way to the right. They are now selling more than they're buying. And look at, they sold in Q1 of 2023, 666. Y'all, I'm telling you, that's a sign right there. That's a, that's a sign. They're not going to do well. That's evil. They sold 666 while only buying 312. This is, in my opinion, this is an absolute trend that we're seeing right now. This is an amazing news. It's great news on two fronts because we're not only getting a crushing of institutional purchase demand, we're also getting more inventory in the form that they're selling those houses to liquidate for some reason. This is great for us, you guys. Unfortunately, it did take a little while, but remember back in March, the Federal Reserve injected $400 billion in liquidity back into the economy. This is great for us as homeowners on the sideline. Let's finish this out. Invitation Homes isn't alone. American Homes for Rent, who was also a net seller in the first quarter of 2023, American Homes for Rent sold off more single family homes than it bought. The net decline saw the Las Vegas based company portfolio shrink 666 homes. In conclusion, I understand that this housing market right now is super confusing, but you want to know what's not confusing? That things are extremely unaffordable right now. And also what's not confusing is, is home prices did actually go up almost 50% in two and a half years. Now, the reasons why that happened is confusing and what's going to happen next is confusing. But y'all, we now have the data that shows the housing market is built on a house of cards. And in my opinion, it's continuously trying to be propped up and Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve is trying to create a soft landing that more than likely is going to result in a hard landing. And again, we already saw that at the beginning of this year. So anyways, if you're on the sideline like I am, this should provide you some hope that things are changing in this housing market that is undisputable. And I do not think the housing market is the new normal. And the reason is the last two and three years, y'all, was not normal. We went through COVID. They're trying to tell us that COVID was normal. It wasn't. And that's my point here. Now, other than that, guys, I hope you guys got some new value, insights, and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck. And I hope you win.